guys welcome to my channel and on this channel i share my experience about working as a data scientist here in amsterdam and i know that it is can be quite challenging to navigate this field it's got a lot of obstacles so not only do i share my experience but i also share certain tips that have helped me along the way to overcome these obstacles so for the past six months I was in the job market and I was looking for new opportunities in Amsterdam and during that process I found out a lot of things and to give you context I have a master's in data science I've been working as a data scientist and a data science lead or I guess in data and in this field for about seven years I've got experience building machine learning models also deploying them and managing them in production so for me I would say that my skills and experience puts me in a very good position in this market to get a new job but i still struggled a bit in finding something that was really suited for me or something that was gonna pay me well i also struggled with interview processes that tested me in areas of expertise that i did not have knowledge in or kind of just really surprised me with um stuff <coughs> So this video will be divided into two parts. So the first part will be the top three things that I have learned about the market in Amsterdam slash Netherlands. The second part, I'll be giving tips that I hope can increase your chances of landing a job offer in Amsterdam. Note, increase your chances. I am not promising that if you follow all these tips, you're going to get a job in the Netherlands. It's just stuff that I have discovered that was pretty consistent throughout all the interview processes I went through. And just to give you an idea, I interviewed for about 16 companies, had approximately about, let's say 30 plus interviews and got three offers. So I do have quite a lot of data and I am very excited to share this information with you because I know that on Google, on the internet, you're not going to find a lot of information that's really reflective of what's happening out there, especially in Amsterdam, given that there's not a lot of public information available compared to places like the United States, San Francisco, where there's a big um, tech community that is really active on social media sharing information. So yeah, let's get started. Finding number one. So getting a job in 2017 versus 2022 is a completely different game. And some factors that have influenced this is number one, the entry of Fang Mang companies in the Netherlands. We now have a lot more companies here. Um, for example, Amazon and Meta just recently established themselves in 2020. They are actively recruiting for data science job, machine learning jobs, um, data analyst, data engineering, the whole shabam bam bam landscape, right? So these companies are offering much more money, much more benefits, much more flexibility, and that really changes the landscapes for other companies already established here in the sense that many people now are asking for more money and it's sort of pushed up the scale a bit in terms of how much you can ask as a data scientist. But all of these really comes at a catch because these interview processes are quite intense, they're quite hard, and they do require like a lot of mental preparation and not just like technical um, interview prep as well. I definitely know the pain of going through a nine step interview process with one of these companies. And trust me, after that step, I was like, I am never doing this to myself ever again, ever. I did get to understand like my maximum earning potential. And not only that, it also gave me much more confidence to ask for more money and negotiate more from other companies that I interviewed with afterwards. The second thing that's pretty much made like getting a job in 2017 versus 2020 a little bit more different is remote working. So because of the pandemic, many of us were able to work from home and still be effective. And especially in the jobs roles, like these tech ones, like the data science jobs. So a lot of companies also realize that like they can get 
um, talent remotely. They don't have to only source talent in their local markets. Therefore, this makes the market more competitive, not competing with huge international talents, right? You're competing with people across the world. So getting your CV recognized, especially by top companies, um, is going to be much more challenging. Let me share my experience with a company called Spotify. I've applied to Spotify before, right? A couple of times. Never have I ever gotten an interview with them once or even like a recruiter screening call not at all zero but i was able to interview for pretty much all big tech companies even if i did not have the desired experience or skills that they were looking for but spotify is i think it's just very attractive for a lot of people and they're getting massive application getting recognized by them is quite difficult and i think that's changed the landscape over the years it's pretty much everybody working in data who calls themselves a data scientist so i believe this has led to many companies updating their interview processes in such a way that they introduce very challenging technical rounds they also introduce live coding in order to minimize the chances of getting a lot of false positive and i think many companies have applied these processes without really thinking why they do it they're just kind of like oh google does it so we might as well just do it too. And the final thing that's changed the landscape over the years I want to talk about is gatekeeping. I think this might be a little bit of a controversial one, but I honestly believe that many organizations now have established data science teams. There are data science managers and team leads um, who are looking for something specific, right? And if somebody that they're interviewing does not have that specific thing that they're looking for, they will just reject them instantly without actually even considering what other things that person could bring or without considering that maybe this person is smart enough to actually learn this as they go. So they don't really keep an open mind. I guess I'm putting that in a nice way, but in the most straightforward way possible, I feel like some organizations and some data science teams have really established a tech bro culture that's really strong and trying to get into those teams or trying to get an offer from these types of teams is going to be extremely challenging and it will make you feel like you are stupid. Number two, so this is the second finding about the market that I discovered during my job search. Trying to break into a new domain is quite challenging. And domain in data science has different meanings. So let me bring it down to you. So when I see domain, I see the first part, including like technical knowledge. So for example, you specialized in natural language processing, NLP, or computer vision, or maybe time series forecasting. The second part of it is more relating to industry knowledge. So for example, you're a supply chain data scientist and you understand supply chain business quite well, or marketing and you understand marketing quite well, or healthcare and you also understand healthcare and the types of problems in healthcare pretty well. The sweet point of it is when you can combine these two. So for example, you're moving from Bo to Amazon. So Bo is a competitor of Amazon in the retail space. They are a Dutch company though. And at Bull, you were working in rec building recommender engines. And now there's a position in Amazon that also requires somebody to work with recommender engines. It's easy to slot in there. And you probably wouldn't have to do that much interview preparation um, if you were data sciencing right at Bull. But however, if you were someone who was a general data scientist, it's going to be pretty hard to move into that position at Amazon um, if there are other applicants with that domain expertise in the interview processes as well. And what I found out is that many companies will still be willing to give you an interview with them and you can end up making it through like your six step interview processes or need to get a rejection letter that you're not technical enough and don't take that personally. It just means that it's just not your domain. You do not demonstrate that you've got enough domain knowledge to actually be able to be successful at that particular position, but you are probably technically strong in other areas. So number three, so this is the third thing that I've discovered about the market. Salary ranges are pretty wide. So you can find that per annum base salary for entry level data science job can range between 40,000 euros and maybe 80,000 euros. 
And for senior data scientists, this could range between 60 to like 100. And obviously the high ranges are coming from those main companies that entered the market. What I also believe is that many companies in the Netherlands interview you based on your skills. So if you're a senior data scientist with a lot of depth, so for example, you not only have built models, um, but you've also deployed them into production, you've managed pipelines in some way, you've also managed models in production itself, so the whole life cycle, as well as managing or leading teams, you'll find that for a senior data science job, given that it's the correct company, you could negotiate something up to 100k. That is really an important finding as it kind of tells you to not focus so much on titles. So that pretty much leads to the second part of this video where I am now going to give you some tips um, that you can apply in order to overcome some of these challenges in the market given that it's much more competitive, you've got big players in the market, you've got remote working where you are now competing with huge international pools of talent, you've got companies that are now more mature and offering specialization so breaking into a new niche is much harder. You can earn a lot more money if you can demonstrate your skill sets very well in interview processes and you can also earn more money depending on what industries you decide to focus on and tech bro culture is still thriving. So the first tip I will give you is don't focus on titles too much because data science means different things in different companies. Don't be afraid to apply for a data scientist job even if now your title is senior data scientist because you might not be that much of a senior that you think you are in another space as well as you could still potentially earn more money with just a plain data science title because you are now moving to an industry that values that role a little bit more and is more mature. Also explore various titles such as research scientist and machine learning engineer because you find that some companies use data scientists in the same context as a machine learning engineer. So it doesn't hurt to broaden your search. The second thing has to do with interview prep. As I mentioned before that because there's a lot more people in the market, there's a lot more people calling themselves data scientists. Um, the technical processes in many places has become quite intense. You'll see this lead code culture a lot on social media and on the internet where people are recommending that you practice at least five SQL or Python problems on lead code every single day in order to land a data science job. Well, that's not necessarily true because it also really depends on what job you're applying for and what company you are looking to get into. So for example, I interviewed for some man companies and I was successful in the technical screening and I did not spend tons of hours on lead code. What I discovered is that there are certain fundamental concepts in data science that a data scientist should know and it's better to focus on understanding those very well and being able to like walk through them or write them in code format. You don't get penalized so much as a data scientist in these companies. If you write things in a way that shows that you understand the theoretical concept behind it. There are certain companies that really wanted you to be perfect in how you write your SQL code. Another example is like how I got all the SQL questions correct at one interview, but they said that it took me the whole hour and therefore I was not technically strong enough to proceed to the next round. So it's important to recognize early on that you might not want to put yourself through some of these very intense technical interviews and you can focus on companies which have processes that only require you to do maybe like a take home assignment and are more focused on the business and stakeholder management side of data science, not only just like the software engineering type data science jobs. So don't think that you need to do like six months of prep in this field in order to get a job so that you can earn a six-figure salary it is not true you just have to pick your battles right do make sure that you have practiced or gone through all the fundamentals especially if you're applying for a machine learning heavy job um, making sure that you understand the models and how they work behind the hood and that you can explain that very well is quite essential and that's something that's really tested universally um, for a lot of these data science jobs. The last tip I'm going to give you is just mental preparation. 
be mentally prepared to do six plus interviews especially if you want to go for the big companies especially if you're a woman in tech applying for machine learning jobs very the very technical aspects of data science you are going to be interviewed 99 percent of the time by men 90 percent of these men will be white but apparently they are still diverse because they come from different parts of europe it's a fun time to be a woman in tech anyways you got this keep going and guys that is it for this video i hope that you find these tips useful i wish you all the best of luck if you are trying to look for a new job as a data scientist um i know how difficult it is um and i really believe that if i kept focus on specific aspects of the things i've spoken about today specifically like focusing on domain knowledge and industry niches that are most suited to your skill set i would have been able to eliminate a lot of the noise that i went through in my interview processes that frustrated me and made me feel like i was not good enough that made me feel like my technical knowledge and competencies were not good enough for the market in amsterdam that i needed to study more i needed to do more i even was thinking about maybe i need a phd i had those thoughts in my head but at the end of the day i landed a very good job a very good opportunity i decided to focus on the sector and the industry that my skill sets thrive at i focused on interview processes that i thought were much more fair and did not just want a software engineering data science person so i hope that you can learn from my experience and also share your experience in the comments i am going to be going much deeper into the interview processes and the different resources and steps that helped me along the way in my next videos so subscribe to my channel hit the notification button if you do not want to miss out i was gone for quite a bit but i think i'm gonna be here a little bit more often than before but i'm not gonna commit to releasing a video every week but do really expect that content from me going forward bye